Hello everyone, it's Friday, March 24th, 2023, and I am getting ready to make a new journal entry. So I just used the keyboard shortcut to start a new one. Here's the last one. What are the lessons from oldest recorded language on earth? I might go plural languages, but when I do stuff like that, pulling it from my daily notes here from like talking with Bing and Bard these days it ends up here on my secret blog which when you go to my website here's the home page Ooh, falling down the rabbit hole there is a secret blog that you get to from the logo itself which is further obfuscated making you think it's a page just about the logo but when you scroll down there are these things so I was regenerating this page and I did a refresh so there it is what are the lessons from the oldest recorded language on earth and it leads to a blog page like this which is very much you know Bing format with your references here that I found find so wonderful now that I'm using Bard as well it'll be interesting to generate such pages that uh, are uh, Bard had generated to see if they're as as blog friendly as uh, Bing is making them, Bing Bard, blah, 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 blah. It's a real mouthful. But I'm going to make a new entry. I'm going to make a new entry above this one. What are the lessons from the oldest recorded language on earth? I like it being plural. So the next time I generate it, generate it, it will be languages from the oldest recorded languages and writings. that'll change the title the URL and all that stuff when you go back here because you see it's you know whatever becomes the headline also becomes the anchor text of the link leading to it and all that and uh, it's still there because I haven't regenerated it but when I regenerate it it's gonna be the new thing there so I'm gonna make a new line above it and I'm gonna do that from the next story that I uh, wrote with Bing slash Bard and uh, this is about an influential submarine designer at first, but then it evolves and grows. And well, you'll see, I'm, I'm going somewhere with that. And it'll actually end up being uh, a different headline than what it starts out as. So I paste it. This is a big one, right? So it goes on for a while. Po -po 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 -po. That's what a paste looks like in Vim. It's as if you're typing it in. It's not quite as fast as if you were pasting it into a Windows program like Notepad, where it seems to be pretty uh, instant. But you see these references here, source colon, and then there's two references. And then here's another. Every time I ask a question, Bing gives its references. And it gives a lot of really pretty markdown. Uh, that formats nicely if I were to scroll down you'll see here it gives bullet points sometimes it gives numbered bullet points sometimes it even does those double asterisks for bolding and stuff I don't think there's any in this one but I've been working on some keyboard shortcuts uh, I have one in uh, at B oh that did not do it correctly that was supposed to uh, format that a little better than it actually did let's try that again and if it doesn't I'm just gonna record the macro with you to make sure it, it gets it all yep that did not do it correctly for some reason uh, and I don't think I have it at C nope because that didn't work correctly either maybe I put it at D did I put it at D oh it did the one beneath it so let me go up here at D there it is see how it went from that previous format I'll show you again here see how it's source and one two three four five that's because the one is over here so I deal with all that and make sure it'll format correctly and come out on the website uh, a lot more like here's one on zero fuel nomadic lifestyle plus homeschooling that'll have some references it'll come out like this source and then all the sources listed in this markdown thing that exists for you know quickly formatting code so that it doesn't line wrap and stuff so before and after so I just hit 
ampersand D to run that macro I'm experimenting with. I can just do ampersand ampersand and it'll just go through and do it in each source listed in the article until I see it format wrong which means I know it went past my current article. Now the other thing I do when you look at these things you'll see me going back and forth in conversation with Bing first me and then Bing and of course it's going to be with Bard as well so after a source occurs and then here's me asking a question again and I may format these so everything for me is a headline or it gets it bolded or something so you can differentiate between the questions and answers but I'm taking this one step at a time uh, so I have a macro at a which just puts me colon and Bing colon in there and I'll search on just anything so it gets rid of those strange yellow uh, highlights that was because it was searching on a single space or a line return or something so this is a little more manual I have to go ampersand a and then I have to find the next occurrence which is often after one of those source things ampersand a and as you see it puts in the me and it puts in the Bing and that's all you need you need one me and you need one Bing And anytime there's a me, there's a bing right after it. Sometimes I put in the extra line returns that are necessary uh, that bing has uh, neglected to put in. It formats markdown pretty darn good. It doesn't do it exactly right every time. But you can see here, this is me just quickly going through with some uh, macros, some you know rough macros. I haven't put these in my vimrc yet, but I'm very liked, likely because this is something I'm probably going to be doing uh, very, very commonly. And I'll pick better keys for them. But this is me just about at the end. I just formatted um, a whole interaction uh, with Bing. And now I can uh, do my ampersand uh, P for, oh, well, I'm going to control C that because I didn't give it a headline. On the story level here, this starts out talking about um, submarines that can, who is the influential designer, we'll turn on no wrap so you can uh, see the wrap, or set wrap, so you can see the whole question. Who is the influential submarine designer? He uses upside down lift designs. I think his name is Graham Lawler or something like that. I was wrong. Graham Lawler is like this ultra light startup guy in New York City. And Bing corrects me. The marine engineer and submarine designer you're referring to is Graham Hawks. He is known for designing 70 percent of the crude submarines produced between the 80s and 90s. He also built the deep flight channel. Okay, so it starts out with this guy who does these wonderful things to explore the Mariana trenches and stuff. Well, I'll keep wrap on for a second. And then the story goes on to explore uh, the kinds of things you could do with such designs, uh, specifically line of light, line of sight transmission of energy. So if you have vehicles that are really good at getting places can you make a line of sight power transmission system that could keep them powered and the answer is yes and I go on and explore it to go to its very limits to see how far and how long such a uh, line a of uh, pa sight powered uh, robots could be and if they could be neural nodes increasing the processing power as you added things so it's really sci-fi again and I need to come up with something it's just you know highly speculative so it's line of sight um, powered robots And I like to do it as a question lately. So our line of robot powered, our line of sight powered robots with neural processing possible with scalable, 
scalable neural processing possible really far out there it's like star trek techno babble but it's really what i'm getting at they really are line of sight powered robots so robots that get their power by simply being within the line of sight of the previous robot so you can string them up to potentially unlimited lengths right you might have to intersperse new power sources along the way because of you know uh, thermodynamics but you um you could link more than one together to uh, compensate for that and achieve unlimited lengths and if you gave them uh, neural network processing capabilities there's a fair chance that the whole thing has more intelligence the longer it gets right so just sci-fi concepts and there it is so now i can start to generate that with my ampersand p now that it has a headline otherwise it would come out without a headline and while that's going on see that's going to update over here it's going to add a new headline up here but while that's going on because i don't want to make you wait for the processing what i'm going to do is process the next one so this is done right and i look through these other ones uh, what do people think of bard so far Right? A lot of these I just delete as I go because they're kind of noise. So I'm doing a signal noise thing. The latest episode of Picard had aired. Why is Picard said to have cybernetic or positronic brain? Right. I missed that at the end of episode one. I actually saw it, but it, it failed to imprint on me that Picard's a robot now. Our spirograph patterns orbits. I was going somewhere with that. Oh, this is a good one. This is about a nomadic civilization that can travel around the edge of the um, galactic plane. So if you've got a spiral galaxy, and if you travel around the edge of the spiral galaxy in a spaceship doing little linear jumps from point to point, going in a, a circle that has a shape, I even found the shape of like 32 sided sh shapes and stuff you can take advantage of relativistic uh, time travel time dilation and uh, go around the circle and each time you visit uh, the places you've been are hundreds or thousands of years into the future and you can follow the evolution of such civilizations on each loop around the outer rim of the galaxy so I do ampersand J to start a new one I paste in that text and now this is a little different because you know, you're gonna see my email address this was when chat uh, GPT this is when Bing uh, ran oh and look it locked up it completely locked up so there are characters in here that crashed Bing on the paste and I can't control backspace out of it so this is really bad so it's kind of okay because I did save it and started the publish and there there might be a temp file I have to get rid of but I can just close out of that and we can go and check to see uh, if it's rendered uh, or not instead of getting ahead I'll show you the rendering process I do a refresh on this page and you can see it still has the latest what are the lessons from the oldest recorded language on earth it doesn't even have the corrected headline yet that'll be part of this next rendering so one of the things I very typically do here is if I'm not moving ahead with the next article pushing out three or four at a time uh, that I had produced usually the previous day I'll go in here and I'll take a look at uh, how far along it is on the processing because you can see it doing its thing it's finished the actual building of the new site and it's moved on to reporting the build process which it just finished and here it is on deploying which is pushing the files out into the correct location uh, to actually uh, be published this is the github pages jekyll publishing system it uses the liquid templates from spotify so spotify contributed something to free and open source jekyll jumped on it github jumped on jekyll and now you're able to do uh, stupid publishing tricks like this i just did a refresh and there is the new headline what are the lessons from oldest recorded languages and writings on earth and here's our new article our line of sight powered robots with scalable neural processing possible you click in and here's what you saw me just you know format 
copying and pasting from simple note into vim doing a little bit of formatting in vim and now it is you know a highly optimized blog post there's not links leading to it i took away certain tricks i do with previous next arrows to set, step through blog posts because it makes the pages more messy and it gives a navigation path i don't particularly want to give while this is in secret blog uh status right so people could be on my site all the time get the real main points of the site you know uh how do you resist obsolescence? Well, you run this script, and then you have uh, Linux, Python, Vim, and Git, and then you can start using these things I provide uh, called Levinix and Pipulate, although Levinix is really kind of retired. I can talk about that. You're better off going right to Pipulate and blah, 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 blah. And so I've got the main message of the site here all on the home page and across the... Um, one two three four other links right i plan on just developing that my whole personal site now is one the home page two three four five pages really i've got a five page site uh, which lets me focus on best foot forward bff seo highly optimized fewer pages more tender love and care put into each page however you can't ignore this uh, idea machine the sausage factory of uh, processing ideas which can trickle up to other places right this is the old-fashioned sort of long tail approach to writing or blogging which is an idea factory and it's still worth doing and it's still worth having these you know old-fashioned versions of uh you know optimist long tail optimization which lines up all the crosshairs on the exact word combination uh, it's put in the URL and you know there you kind of have it you see my process that's pretty much it and I'm gonna be uh, blasting out a few more just to catch up on my uh, on my notes my daily interactions with Bing which are helping me think through a lot of ideas I'm ideating right if I go onto the road you know if I go on the road and start to live a nomadic lifestyle after my next you know uh, rental lease expires or whatever can I do it uh, with zero fuel costs? Can I do it just based on solar with the zero fuel costs? And uh, how much does it cost? What kinds of vehicles do you use? And can I do two of them? And while I'm touring the United States and Canada using basically no fuel, could I have someone along with me also using no fuel? And what would their homeschooling uh, curriculum look like? So I'm really exploring lots of ideas. Uh, the age of AI being upon us is about improving the lives of humans. So thanks for joining me. Hope to see you again soon. And don't forget to subscribe.